Hello everyone. I trust you keep it safe and well. Um, last time out, I spoke about wisdom and getting God's kind of wisdom. And I'd like to recap on that first before I, I go through the, the point I want to discuss today. As a recap, we talked about how we got God's kind of wisdom, what it's all about, why we need it, and how we can acquire it. The Bible tells us that if anyone needs wisdom, that he should ask, and that God who gives freely will give wisdom for us to be able to handle the affairs of life. Today, I want to speak about the book of Ecclesiastes. I believe it's a book that covers in some kind of succinct way how Solomon evolved, especially in his old age, looking at wisdom and how he dealt with life. And so over the next few minutes, we will cover that part of things. Now, Solomon was a, a king in Israel and he started off very well with God and God was impressed with him so much so that God asked him if he wanted any gift from him. And this is what I want to share with you is covered in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 7 to, to 12. In verse 7 of that chapter, God asks Solomon what he wants from him. And Solomon in, in the latter verses then talks about wanting wisdom to be able to lead God's people aright. And God not only gave him wisdom, but gave him wealth as well to go with it because God felt that his heart was in the right place by asking for, for wisdom first. Now it's important again that we look at wisdom as we have done in the past from an eternity perspective. And Solomon starts off by going in some kind of cynical way at the beginning of, of Ecclesiastes, but makes his way gradually to draw a conclusion that it is the eternal perspective of wisdom that really does matter. So what I'll do over the next few minutes again is to go through more or less chapter by chapter and highlight a few things that I think are, are salient to understanding that to that progression. Now, the first two chapters of, of Ecclesiastes more or less focuses on, on Solomon talking about the em emptiness, the word he uses uh, in the in the King James Version is, is vanity, emptiness, things that are not meaningful. Uh, to talk about the events in our daily lives that that involves what we eat what we drink etc he highlights again that there's nothing new under the sun that he has built mansions he's acquired land servants farms he has parted and that in all of those things uh, that it has been emptiness that it hasn't really added any value to him especially from a, a point of eternity an eternal perspective now i'll read uh, just a, a verse in in chapter two to highlight this this is a uh, ecclesiastes 2 verse 24 it says nothing is better for a man than he should eat drink and his soul should enjoy in his labor this also i saw was from the hand of god all the things that we do are empty but the things that god gives us let us enjoy them he highlights there in chapter 3 it starts off by talking about um time and seasons for everything and i believe that's perhaps the part where everyone knows uh, ecclesiastes where it talks about uh, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to harvest and goes on for the next eight chapters uh, sorry next eight verses along those lines trying to highlight to us that in in living our lives being able to get the right perspective and to be able to do the right things at the right time is very, very important in being wise people and understanding God's purpose and plan for our lives. Um, chapters four to six effectively goes back again to talk about the vanity, but particularly it highlights the fact that wealth does not provide us with satisfaction. Uh, again, I think it's important to note that what Solomon is trying to build here is to is to get to a point where we understand that things in this world are transient, but wisdom shows us that in the end, a view of eternity is what accounts for perfect wisdom in Christ. Now, in chapter 5, verse 10, I'd like to read that. I think it's, it's, it's a nice verse that uh, covers quite a bit of what we're talking about here. And chapter 5, verse 10 says, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, 
nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. So I think it's important for us to highlight there as well. God's blessings, whilst they are good in terms of physical and material things, those are not the things that secure eternity and those are not the things that highlight wisdom for, for from an eternal perspective. Now, um, chapter 7 to 10 talks about really practical areas of wisdom. And I'd like to share just a, a couple of verses here with us. Um, I'll read uh, chapter 7, verse 1 first. And it says that a good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now, the chapter goes on to give examples of, of how, how wisdom, practical wisdom can be applied to, to various issues in life. And it just goes right down to, to, to chapter 10 in highlighting those things. One of the things it says also in, in um, chapter 7, uh, verses 11 and 12, is the benefits that come from wisdom. It says, wisdom is good with an inheritance and profitable to those who see the sun. For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. In chapter 8, it, it talks about the inevitability of death. Uh, chapter 9 as well goes on to extol some further uh, virtues of, of practical wisdom and living with wisdom on a day-to-day on -day basis. Now, chapter 11 goes on to talk about hard work and diligence. Again, this is part of the walk, uh, the walk of wisdom and being able to do things at the right time. Um, again, I'd like to share some verses of scripture with us here. Actually, chapter 11, verse 6 in particular. It says, In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Hard work and diligence is effectively saying that it, it uh, brings a reward. The scripture says in Proverbs, it says that see a man diligent in his ways, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mere men. Now, the the word of God also builds up in chapter 12, which is the last chapter in the book, and, and draws uh, a good conclusion in, in verse uh, from verse 11 and 12 onwards. However, I'd like to highlight uh, the beginning of, of chapter 12, which I think is, is very important. Again, I think it's a part that we come across in scriptures a lot. It says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in, de in them. It's talking about getting to know God and doing the things of God early on in our lives and so that we have a long life and a long walk with God and in, in understanding his ways. Now in all of this, we are drawing to a point where God, oh, sorry, Solomon draws a conclusion about all the journey he's had in his life and in his old age. And this comes up in, in the end of, of, the, of the chapter here. It says, Father, my son, this is verse 12 onwards, be admonished by this of making many books that there is no end, and many study wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing whether good or evil. And that's my uh, review of the book of Ecclesiastes. I hope you have been able to pick up one or two things from it. I certainly have. God bless you and keep you. And I hope I get to see you soon. Bye.